this is Superhero and I'm getting ready to record an episode of the Hillcast. This is for the Jugglers and the Jugglets. I don't try this at home, I hope you like it. Woop woop. Fuck this shit. It's me, it's me, it's the RVE, coming back here to do an episode of the Hillcast, and before I get into this, I just have to say that this is by far the worst podcast that I have ever been on. It's RVE with the Hillcast, we are the, God, I don't know, the toilet humor of the Wrestling Impact AEW podcast world. With me this week, I've got two of the saltiest motherfuckers this side of the chef household with me i've got the uh blind hater of all things that is the amazing all elite wrestling i've got the fat master tastic curls curls what's going on you salty bitch that fap was just for impact wrestling by the way i will now be known as the impact wrestling pearls thank you very much I don't think there was any any dispute in this by any means there, but uh, the impact wrestling hurls. And I'm not going to lie, I, I've actually kind of, uh, it's not been my proudest fap since Megan Rapino, but I have actually uh, felt the near to the urge to fap to Slammiversary because it was so amazing. Now, on the other hand, I've got the man so salty that he actually calls this brilliant, amazing masterpiece that was Slammiversary as quote-unquote solid. He's here with his funky bunch, but I've got Larky Lark with us. Larkin, what's going on, my man? I'm doing well. Slammiversary was a solid, absolutely amazing show. I enjoyed it from top to bottom. I know you don't like the word solid, but it's okay, Raven Effect. Solid just means it was all right. It was... This was this was better than all right. All right. Well, they usually deliver with Slammiversary. Like, I, what, 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 you wouldn't expect nothing less, man? It's Slammiversary. Big pay-per-view of the year. Take it to the pay window. They did, except for RVD. He took it to the bank and then took it to the 420 bank. Oh, my God. Please don't with that freaking promo. My God. Uh, yeah, yeah, Moose, uh, yeah, I'm going to wrestle him. You know, he thinks he's going to be RVD, but there's only one RVD, bro. And I'm like, okay, that's nice. And, like, you could tell RVD is, is normally pretty calm. Yeah, but, you know, I'm pretty calm. Uh, Everybody wants to be RVD. Moose thinks he's a new show. Whatever, man. But, like, you could tell I'm not um, calm right now. Wasn't that an actual line of the problem? Yeah, you could tell him not very calm. You know, RVD, he's all very chill, bro. And But, you know, he's making me mad, Moose. Whatever you say, you know, he wants to test himself against me. But whatever, dude, yeah. No fucking idea what he, had, what he was doing there or what was going on. Literally probably the worst investment since bringing in Rhino, especially with contract infringement. But, you know, never mind. Uh, Hurls is going to tell you how amazing that was. Now, anyways, before we hop into the news, the reviews, and, and all that is for the Jews, uh... We're going to go ahead and go around it and just tell you to listen to our entire big, huge, hillbilly, redneck, eight sides of Kevin Bacon fucking Hillcast family. Uh, the Impact AEW dude uh, in Impact Wrestling Hurls, you can basically just stick to exclusive to the, the Hillcast. Larky Lark and his funky bun. I mean funky bun. This motherfucker is a horror ring of podcasts. Uh, Larkin, want to tell him everything that you do? I mean, this might take you two hours for you to tell every show that you do, but... Uh, you want to go ahead and tell the folks where to find you? Of course. You can, guys can check me out on SM Show 1 or at MCL92 on the Twitter machine and Larkin underscore 92 on Instagram. Uh, StephenMikeShow.com. That's www.StephenMikeShow.com, which brings you a variety of interviews, pop culture, hockey talk, and just whatever our hearts desire. And, you know, it's it's amazing just, like, you know, to be doing this for four and a half years now and just doing it with you guys. Do it with a plethora of people, Max Wrestling and the whole nine. So I'm really lucky and privileged to do what I do. I'm the host of the LFC podcast, Lingerie Fighting Championships, entitled Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, which we exude and accentuate the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are, that being beauty, strength, and dominance. Uh, we're coming upon to episode eight of that show. I just recorded episode seven with uh, Onyx, the former Bronco Billy of the original WOW Women of Wrestling, who will be coming into LFC on August 15th. So there's a lot going on, and you guys can check that out at LL Lingerie FC on Twitter, and it's on uh, Stitcher. 
uh, Podbean, Pocket Cast, and wherever you're, you can get your you know podcasting needs in your ears. You know what I'm saying? So just everybody enjoy. I love what I'm doing. Also, you can catch Larkin be an honorary Mexican with the Bodega Podcast. Yes, absolutely. And uh, gosh, damn, Larkin, what was I going to say? The other thing that you do. Um, oh, any fat woman that has ever been fucked on camera, <laughs> Larkin has done a podcast with her. <laughs> I figured I'd leave you, let you have that line because I knew it was coming. So thank you, Raven. Of course. Uh, wrestling Robert from Robert Does Wrestling is Ro- Robert's on a hiatus, isn't he? He's on a hiatus right now, but he'll pop up every now and then. He's still doing some bodega with us. Robert is not a fan of, of Impact these days. He says he'll start watching when uh, Don Cyrus Callis is gone, which I actually sorry, Robert. I hope you don't. Uh, I hope you don't start watching Impact again because I love me some Don Callis. Uh, you got who else? We got Kyle who uh, has branched out to BQ's network with the Total Nonstop Impact podcast on the Impact Lounge. Uh, BQ is going to be opening up this uh, All Elite AEW page coming up soon, which you can't miss. I've heard he's got the greatest co-host in the amazing world of co-hosts with him. But uh, not to mention any spoilers, but I'll tell you, he's great. Ask your mother. Um, Am I missing anyone else? No, no, you pretty much mentioned Kyle Trenton. Now, J-Bone, J-Bone has been added to the Impact Lounge. I've smashed his podcast. We have a three-man team for the Total Nonstop Impact podcast. All right, we got Hurl smashing his J-Bone over here. Hurl's, uh, I mean, let's get right into it before we get into the news. Let's get into uh, last Sunday. Actually, not last Sunday, but the Sunday prior to last, which Sunday was yesterday. We had Slammer, is it Slammerversary 17? I know one of you two fuckers knows. Yes. Hold, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Before before we go any further, and before I was rudely skipped, I would like to promote a couple of my podcasts, go ahead, if, I, if I will. Go ahead. Go ahead okay. Uh, I want everyone to check out the frickin' homicide uh, interview, okay? Like, the views are definitely nowhere where they should be, and I, for, for shows like this, for some reason, they're like triple, triple our, our views. But when I bring on a freaking Impact Wrestling legend, you people don't want to hear it. So I want, I want to know right now, do you guys care to hear wrestling interviews? Because from what I'm seeing, you don't. So come on, everybody who listens to the Heel Cast at least once a month. Start freaking listening to my interviews, or I'm going to stop doing it. Plain and simple. Anyway. Or what could happen is the guest just no shows on you, but... Yeah, yeah, that that that's kind of pisses me off too. But, anyways, uh, I, I got to promote the homicide interview. If you haven't listened to it, please, please do. And I want to know in the comments section: Do you like the interviews, or do you just find them kind of repetitive? And you can be honest; it's totally fine with me. I don't care because you'll probably save me a lot of time from doing them. Also, check out a podcast that I just recently finished up with Chef. Uh, we talked uh, the NBA free agency, which was probably one of the craziest free agencies that I've ever seen. Um, so check that out. I also had a hand in editing that show, and uh, it's possible I might start doing some cool stuff with the Heel Cast as far as editing goes. So check that out. Tell me what you think. It's under my page, Matt Hurley, on YouTube. Just type in NBA free agency. That's all I got. Let's hit. To, let's go to Slammiversary. Right, wait, before we even go to Slammiversary, I actually do have one thing to say, and you guys know what that is. I actually am clueless. I think I might have been hit retarded, but... Okay. We are actually uh, approaching the six-year anniversary of a certain championship win, and do you know what championship that win is? Uh, Eric Young becoming the Knockouts champion. No. Hurls, go ahead. you want to take a shot? Uh, Cody so Diener winning the Knockouts championship. 2013... I'm going to say Magnus winning the world title. <laughs> no, this is the, we're coming upon the six-year anniversary when Chris Sabin defeated Bully Ray for the World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, you had Ooh. to remind me. Okay. <laughs> yes. Hail Sabin. Hail Sabin. And I got nothing but love for Chris Sabin. I do too. It looked terribly. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah. It was the Battle of the I Fucked Velvet first match. And, uh, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I still feel like Saban's going to end up fucking her last. But that said, take that bully, faggot. Uh, Hurl, or 
Larkin, I might have you edit that F word out. I apologize. No, you, uh, it's all right. Uh, the, he said what he said was Finocchio, ladies and gentlemen. He said Finocchio. He was he was speaking Italian. Raven, you were telling your Italian. It's I okay. mean that, and no, uh, when I when that word is used, it means nothing against the gay people. It's if you've seen South Park, I don't use that as I've never thought as that as it's a, you're gay, homosexual. I use it as in you're a, a douchebag. So yeah, you were channeling anyway. your inner, you were channeling your inner Eminem when he was talking about Christina Aguilera and the boy bands in 2000. I see where you're going there, Raven Effect. Speaking of, uh, never mind, Larkin. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to talk about some of your, your musical uh, reviews lately. Um, what I did want to say, though, is if you haven't checked out Hurls' interview, Hurls and the Impact Dudes interview with, with Homicide, it is actually great, great stuff. Uh, the viewership on it is, is pretty ridiculous for what it is. Uh, great interview. No punches pulled. You learn a lot of stuff in there. Love it. Made me have a new respect for Homicide, a new respect for the Impact Dude, and less respect for Hurls. Um, <clears throat> just kidding, Hurls. Just kidding. But uh, let's hop into, by chance, the, if not one of the two best pay-per-views of 2019, because I can't, I can't tell you if I thought that it was actually better than Rebellion, but fantastic Slammiversary that we just had, 17 years in 2019. Uh, X Division match, fantastic. I mean, this just kind of got thrown together. Uh, we got a returning TJP, uh, the Mac himself, Willie Mac, getting the win, which is awesome because I don't think that Willie Mac gets enough uh, wins in this company. There was some shit done in this match that I've never seen before. This match just straight up blew me away. I got nothing but praise. Willie Mac for for the size that he is, a dude that he looks like. I cannot believe the stuff that you see this man do. Can't even sing the praises enough of this. Uh, Larkin, thoughts on it? I really did enjoy this match and just the high octane aerial assault for, like you mentioned, a guy that is Willie Max size getting the win. And I know we will get into Rich Swan and Johnny Impact in a second, but I personally, whether it be just them two going at it as two friends and then one of them turns on each other, I love to see Rich Swan and Willie Mac for that X Division Championship. As far as TJP goes, man, I've enjoyed his work in um in Impact WWE 205, whatever you have it. I even like to see him go against Rich Swan because during the, his 205 live tenure, him and Rich Swan had some great matches, and I'd like to see that happen on uh, Impact Wrestling as well. So I think either Rich Swan and Willie Mack or Rich Swan versus TJP have have that, you know, become a feud in Impact Wrestling would be cool, but every guy, and same with Trey Miguel, killed it, so I mean, Willie Mack getting the dub, I enjoyed it, it was uh, it was very good, I liked it very much, go ahead, Ross. Brother, we're gonna put you in a mask, and we're gonna call you Manic, brother, that's gonna get over. Anyways, I mean, look how much better TJP is from the last time he was in TNA, and he was just pretty much shitted on. I was a pretty big fan, I know this guy doesn't always do himself the best uh, as far as backstage goes. But, man, he looks so smooth in there. A lot of new um, moves to his arsenal. And just this overall match was really solid opener. Got everything going, got the crowd pumped, and they really never let down throughout the night. Uh, Willie Mack is amazing. Uh, I was watching the pay-per-view with guys who don't really watch Impact much. They were really impressed with Willie Mack. Uh, they didn't know really who anybody was. I mean, surprisingly, they didn't really even know who TJP was, despite uh, him just being on WWE television. But uh, very, very fun match. I enjoyed it. The spots were amazing. I cannot wait until this pay-per-view comes on Impact Plus to rewatch it again. But this match was awesome. Willie Mack, much deserved to get this victory. I can't wait to buy this thing on DVD. Fuck, fuck Impact Plus, man. They're getting my money again. Uh, actually, they didn't really get it that first time. But uh, they will get it, though. And I got to say that this, you know what, TJP, since he's returned, I know he's only been in, what, like three matches so far. But I got to say, this is he's really put on his best performances for Impact Wrestling since Finger Blast and Angelina Love backstage. Um, I just, awesomeness. I want to see Willie Mack really contend for the X Division title. I think uh, it's time, and the Rich Swan reign has been great, but I think Willie Mack needs to be the guy to take that belt. Um, you know, I'm not as a big a fan as Trey as I am with the other guys, but he impressed me too. The Chris brothers, I, I still don't know which one is which, but uh, I like them because they're with the man. Sammy the Callahan Death Machine for champ. But anyways, amazing opener. Uh, couldn't ask for more for that. So we go to the tag team title match now. It was originally supposed to be the Rascals against LAX. Um, we did the Bash at the Brewery on Friday night, 
And we ironically, uh, and I guess a way to make these things more watchable, although I'm not going to lie, man, this, the, the crowd for this batch of the brewery was, was an embarrassment. And it's sad to see. Um, but the North actually defeated LAX to win the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Championship. So this becomes a three-way match. And we have the North actually retaining and winning, which unfortunately became predictable. Um, I do want to say, as much as I like the North, I was really excited to see the LAX and the Rascals uh, team versus team, and I was hoping it was finally going to be the Rascals' time. Uh, that said, the North retains uh, the the downfall of the match. I think this match would have been a lot better, and I know it was towards the end, but I think the Santana legitimately getting hurt took away from the greatness of how this match could have been and how the ending could have went. Uh, Hurls, I'm going to go to you. Your, your thoughts on the match and who retained it? The right team walk away as champs? <laughs> yes, yes. I think the North are by far the best. The next man up as far as uh, once LAX is no longer with us. So I think it was an obvious choice. Uh, you, know, I don't even have to talk about Josh Alexander. Go back four months ago and I was splurging all over the guy. Not literally, but figuratively. And uh, they're, they're, they're a solid team. Um, I, I do want to see the Deaners get involved eventually. Um, but I, I, I thought the match was decent. I think it could have been better. Uh, it looked like they didn't really know what to do once Santana did get injured. Um, so I think it could have been better in that regard. But still, I think the North is a really solid team, and I'm loving what they're doing with the with the tag team belts. And honestly, with, with LAX probably on the way out, and we'll talk about it later, I think the tag team division actually is going to get better because I actually think that LAX – was kind of like the Hardys where they just dominated the division and really nobody else besides the Lucha Brothers really gave them any competition. So uh, I'm actually excited to see what the tag team division is going to be going forward. I think it opens up a lot of new opportunities. And I will say, I haven't watched I haven't watched yet uh, Bash at the Brewery, but when I do, I think it's kind of refreshing that they're actually doing some title changes on these one-night-onlys and on these uh, Twitch events because – it actually makes you think like, oh, hey, maybe something something cool could happen. So um, I'm, I'm all for it uh, in that regard. I thought it was interesting that we had the title change. I think it was cool. And then we had the North retain here. It's unfortunate about um, Santana's injury. As far as LAX with what's been going on, you know, AEW, WWE bound. Now there's a lot of teams that they could go against who in NXT like the Street Profits and do like some intertwining and intertangling there with NXT UK and that roster. AEW you could rehash the Lucha Brothers feud and there's a lot of possibilities on that front as well. But I look at it like if with LAX gone and now you have the North retaining, that being Ethan Page and Josh Alexander, we could continue on with this feud with the Rascals. We can insert the Deaners into this, and it adds more to the tag team. I know we also got the Desi Hit Squad or Shit Squad, as some people call them. But it's going to make for more as well, and I think they're a great tag team uh, together. They mesh well. They've tag team before, obviously. So, I mean, yeah, I was fine with that. I thought it was good, and it just exceeds and progresses more to see what we have in the tag team division for Impact Wrestling. You know, I'm going to agree with Hurl's sentiment about the, the title change at Bass at the Brewery and making these shows actually more watchable or, or giving it more reason to not only tune in, but also to tune in live as they happen. And I was at work, but I was, you know, anticipating watching this show and my phone ran out of data. So I actually didn't actually get to watch Impact that night, but I watched Bass at the Brewery. Somehow I missed this tag team title match when I when I got busy with, with the guests trying to make me some money. But um, the one thing that I... I want to gripe on here is that i do think that this was pushed as the rascals time i feel like the time was right and, and the guys well deserved it. i mean desmond xavier is such a phenomenal talent ab above the other two by far in my opinion and and i was really looking forward to seeing this match not only to see the two teams one-on-one -on -one because of the styles that they're going to do but because i really felt like it was the rascals times like i'm not a fan of the, the intentionally cringeworthy that 70s show type segments in the back but I still love watching these guys go. And you guys have mentioned the Deaners, the Desi Shit Squad. I'm not going to call them the Hit Squad. They are the Desi Shit Squad. And so on and so on. Like, it is the North and it is the Rascals. And that that's what it needs to be because, look, let's, let's move on to it. I'm going to throw the, I'm going to incorporate the news just into this, this segment. So, uh, LAX's contract is up. Um, Impact is apparently still negotiating, trying to re-sign the duo. Um, but apparently, like, WWE is calling... AEW is calling it, and it seems to be between those two. So, unfortunately, it, it's amazing as LAX has been, and just a literally, man, since the minute these guys came in, 
whether it's been their heel run or their face run, they have been one of the most incredible and my favorite acts in all of Impact Wrestling for the past two, two and a half years or however long it's been since they've come in. Um, you know where I want them to go. If they're not going to stand with Impact, so I'd like to see them do, but the, the teams in Impact, there's just not a lot there for them to still do it unless they want to put Santana as a, as a star and push him solo. Uh, is, is AEW, which I do think has the best tag division in the entire business right now. I think about SCU, Lucha Brothers again, Young Bucks, Cody and Dustin, Private Party, uh, The Dark Order, Chucky e. T and, and Trent Beretta, um, Luchasaurus and, and, and Jungle Boy. Like, there's so many good teams that they could be against, and uh, I hope... For the love of God, because I do also think the WWE is going to water them down, ruin them, whatever. I hope to God if NXT is not, or if LAX is not going NX or not staying with Impact, they end up all elite. TNT October LAX fifty one fifty. Brat Hurls, I know what you're going to say. Go ahead and take the, the the viewpoint here. Um. Well, AEW de- definitely needs them, in my opinion, uh, because. I, I personally think that they need more tag teams. Um, but, you know, if WWE gets them, I don't know how they'll do. It, it's it's really tough to say. I don't know necessarily right now if tag teams are really all that respected in WWE. Um, there's, you know, you got the Usos and you got the New Day and, you know, you had the, the Revival doing their thing. But... I really, I really don't know. I mean, I, I think I could see them spinning their wheels in WWE. They may, they might get the titles one time, but you know, if they go to AEW, they already got that chemistry with the Lucha Brothers. And if they don't feel, if they feel a little more comfortable in a, with AEW, then I think, I think if AEW does get them, that's a solid grab. I mean, they're both trying to get them because they know how 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 talented they are. My only gripe is, though, that um, they wrestled for Evolve. They were supposed to wrestle the Street Profits, who are on Raw now, I believe. So uh, you definitely know that, and I always call Evolve is kind of the gateway to WWE in a sense. Um, So I think WWE could get them, and I think there could be interest there. Uh, It really might just come down to who's willing to shell out more for them. So... Uh, as much as I'm going to miss them in Impact, uh, they are, you know, very talented. Uh, I, I, I think that Impact's tag team division could be a lot, a lot. It, it opens up a lot more things. And I think that's pretty healthy. So, um, and, and another team that could be thrown in the tag team mix could be OVE as well. So, uh, I, okay. But as far as LAX, though, yeah. It, I mean, it's sad to see them go. I would have liked to see them stay. But if they want to leave, let them. I think Impact's at the point now where they just need to focus on, you know, getting getting back to where they were and securing a TV deal, which we'll talk about later. Okay. All right, let's go to the next match, which was right after the tag titles. We got Eddie Edwards versus Killer Cross in a first blood match. Uh, Hurls, I'll have you start on this one. What did you think about Eddie Edwards and Killer Cross? Um, well, I, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I mean, it was, it wasn't that long. Um, it was, there was some pretty cool spots. I enjoyed it. I, I mean, Killer Cross's look was very interesting. He had new attire and he had face, face paints. Um, uh, so that was kind of interesting, but when he came out, did you not automatically think of Dustin Rhodes as WCW gimmick seven? I, I, does, I did. It does, absolutely. And it's kind of like you look at it like... It's kind of like when people look at it now, they look at the WCW 7, which obviously the whole, fear me. And then we get to now circa like the Darby Allen-ish kind of with AEW. But yeah, I, I did... I, my first instinct was 7, and my notion was 7, yes. Larkin, who'd you say? A 7 or Darby Allen? Who? Darby Allen, the one that's in AEW with like the white face paint? No, never heard of her. No, no, that, wow. Well, you should... Yeah, Harold's being salty and being a hater. Darby Allen, by the way, stealing the motherfucking show at Fighter Fest. Oh my god! And if you watch the documentary, uh, the wrestlers that I told you about, which I stopped because it, guess what? Surprise, surprise, ladies and gentlemen, on on a cable network in this day and age, uh, a wrestling autobiography turned into a liberal 
political fest, uh, of, of course, because why couldn't they? Um, so I stopped watching it. But this is a dude that uh, Ethan Page fucking literally put in a or hit with a shovel, sliced his arm up and put him in a body bag full of thumbtacks, power bombed him, and then pulled him out and power bombed him onto a fucking set of chairs before pitting him, and it was awesome. Darby Allen's going to be a star, so Hurls, suck it. Well, I'll just add one more thing to that. Sorry, Hurls, I didn't mean to interrupt. Also with Darby <laughs> Allen, you look at a guy who, um, you know, he was he was homeless, and he had gone through a lot in his life, and pretty much wrestling has helped become like a savior and helped him and without going through the struggles and the trials and tribulations of his life. Well, I can't, uh, I can't uh, fault that for sure. Go. That's pretty cool. All right, now back to uh, the match. Good. Yeah, yeah, Killer Cross, though, was, I, I don't know, like, if he seemed a little... You know, with the whole contract issues, it just kind of seemed like I could be wrong on this, but did anyone kind of think maybe he was doing this just as a joke, as a as a way to kind of just like, oh, I'm not happy. I'm just going to, well, you know, try right. to bide my time. I'll, 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 I'll take this one, Hills. All right. Yeah. So I think it was a mixture of like he knew this was going to be his last one there, which is fine because I know he's doing a lot of the natural born killer stuff with future stars of wrestling out there in Vegas. It's more like MMA and pro wrestling tie-ins and correlations there. I mean, Stefan Bonner was on that show, Dan the Beast Severn. Him and John Moxley went face-to-face, which was a big surprise. So, I mean, I know he wants to do other ventures, so I think this was just him be doing like this whole unholy priest, kind of like playing off the whole vignettes that we saw between him and Eddie Edwards in the church and a mixture of, yeah, this is going to be my last match, so let me go out with a bang. And I think they did that, and it showed at the end where Kenny Eddie Edwards breaks Kenny, sticks it right in Killer Cross's mouth, and then he bleeds internally. So, I mean, it was it was good from top to bottom, but as far as that, I think he knew he was done, so he wanted to go out with the bang is what I'm going to say. Go ahead, Raven. Now, Larkin, you're boys with Cross. I am boys with Cross. It, I like Cross. Is, is he done? I, I, don't know that you, I don't know that you guys are, you know... BFFs and Cross is going to say, hey, Larky Lark and your funky bun, I'm, I'm done. Is it, do y'all think this is the end of Killer Cross? Uh, uh, well, I'll be honest with you. If that, impact, of course. An impact, okay, yes. Um, I could see maybe they do something like a after impact, like going towards impact in the future, or maybe hell, even if he's done a bound for glory, I don't know. But I've seen mostly his Twitter, most of the stuff that he like promotes is the future stars of wrestling stuff and what he's been doing with natural born killers and stuff. I think he wants to change the game from a landscape and incorporate more MMA and pro wrestling, uh, you know, as a tie in and correlations there, man. Because I know he's tight with like the Stephen Bonners, like I mentioned, and he wants to add all these people to it, just from what I'm saying. But yeah, as far as him, I think he just wants to make a change and make a difference in the wrestling world. I think wherever he goes, he's going to be fine. I know he posted a picture raven effect of him Ty valkyrie and johnny impact and there is a certain triple a show in september at madison square garden so who knows maybe we'll see them at madison square garden i mean it's a disappointment like i i was a big fan of cross and he, he won me over more i mean shit i didn't get to do a, a part of it but he did our show with us he's done multiple things with lark in here so it, it was disappointment with the contract thing I've said my, my, my thoughts on this contract issue with Killer Cross before, um, you know, and, and I can kind of see both sides, but in a way, it's like I've said, you sign a contract, you live up to it, and if, if Impact is letting him out of his deal, I guess that's that's good on them. Um, you know, everything he's done, he's really burnt bridges, so it was kind of uh, very predictable for me who I thought was going to win this match. Uh, poor Eddie Edwards, man. There's that Eddie Edwards curse. It's like everyone he works and feuds with ends up leaving the company or, or you know, at least at least this got to a pay-per-view match for poor Eddie, who's just like an unsung hero for the company. Um, it was very entertaining. Uh, unfortunately, my feed kind of cut out when I was watching this match, and, and I was actually getting a little bit tied up at work. I kind of caught the end there. Uh, the right person went over. That said, if, if the contract issues with Killer Cross weren't going on. I, I would have absolutely said Killer Cross should have won. Actually, I think Killer Cross should have been winning that world title. Uh, it's anniversary, to be honest with you guys. But um, you know, it's uh, the I did think of the whole seven thing. I guess the the unholy priest in that little segment that they did. Larkin probably is touching on it right. Granted, I mean, what a good what a way to mock Impact and come out the, with uh, you know one of the stains on the company one of their god-awful writers from one of god-awful gimmick that was done in wcw right hurls um but anyways uh very entertaining match props to eddie edwards i hope this isn't the last of killer cross i hope that they fucking can like work something out and keep him around and, and make this guy the star but i i do know he wants to do the new japan shit and if future stars are wrestling i don't even know what the fuck that is so props love uh hurls i'm sure you, you've got a, a mouthful of stuff to say now but uh, it was it was only in good fun there. Yeah, I don't, I don't really think like I, I don't I don't think Impact should release him out of his contract because I feel like once you sign something, you should honor it. 
and I feel like he's just going back on his word. Like, if I can't trust you here, where else, what else can't I trust you with? So uh, he's very talented. He's got a great character. I think he's got one of the best characters in Impact, and it sucks that, uh, you know, he's trying to get out. Um, at the same time, I mean, I, I, I think if, if, if he finishes out his deal in a year, whenever it is, and, he's, and, he, and Impact doesn't give him, you know, the deal he's looking for, then fine, you're free to leave. You can go to WWE or AEW or New Japan, wherever you want to go. It's fine, and, and it's, I, I would not have an issue with it. The, the thing that I have issue with is him trying to get out of his contract early. And if you, you know, and I, I hope he puts his best effort forward. Um, I hope he doesn't go, no offense to Raven here, but I hope he doesn't go out like EC3 and just mails it in his last month with the company. Uh, I, I just, I, I think he had a good performance. I don't think it was great. I don't think the, um, the face paint did him any favors. Uh, the promos were very cool leading up to their match, but um, I would love to see Killer Cross stay, but they already let Scarlet go. They may just end up letting Killer Cross go, and I hope they don't do that because it would show, I think, a sign of weakness. But that's pretty much all I got. But as far as the match goes, like I said, it was just okay. Could have been a little better, um, but, it, I mean, obviously Eddie's going to win that. Um, I'm a big fan of Eddie Edwards, so I was happy about that. Yeah, man. yeah, I was too. I can't just I can't disagree with the word you said, Hurls. Uh, I mean, even with the EC3 thing, it's not like going to get butthurt over EC3. I don't, I don't love him like I love Eli Drake. Okay, I do love him. I miss you, Ethan. I miss you, Rockstar Spud. They're not listening. Lord, can I know you're trying to say what, what, were we, what were we trying to chime in there, my friend? Oh no, I was just saying. Like, I look, I look at what they've been doing. As far with, uh, you know, like you mentioned, like your EC3s now, he's kind of stuck in that 24-7 thing. Rockstar Spud has been a big part of the thing with him and his wife. It's It's been funny, but I look at it like this as far as them, yeah. I mean, EC3 had the better run in Impact, but I mean, I guess if he's happy and he's making money and he's there with his friend who, I mean, EC3 was literally Rockstar Spud's best man at his recent wedding to one Renee Michelle who was absolutely gorgeous. So, I mean, dude, I mean, if they're happy, they're happy. But yeah, I, I have to say over the two, I think uh, the Impact run obviously was better during his tenure there and I mean he was went to we went to NXT right and then he friggin he was there for like a cup of coffee and then they immediately brought him to the roster and that's kind of killed his vibe since coming up to the main roster for WWE so I hear you on that that's all I was going to say I just want to add on to what you were saying I did notice uh today actually on, on Facebook that the uh former and always known as Rockstar Spud actually sent a t-shirt to a friend of the heel cast who just did our intro superhuman for all the jugglers and jugglets today uh, so Rockstar Spud knows that uh, Superhuman is a real stuntman, so that's crazy. That said, uh, we're going to move on to the next match, which I think was the uh, worst match of the night, but I still don't think it was bad. It was it was Rob Van Dam against Moose. Uh, RVD, man, I just that promo and interview and then seeing him just not fully go and give it their all in the ring, man, it just put a bad taste in my mouth of a guy that I've always been a big fan of. Um, I mean, Rob's always fucking baked out of his mind. I'm not going to say he was so high, he didn't know what he was doing. No, when you, and, and trust, I'm, I'm a fucking retired hardcore stoner, man. When you smoke weed like that all the time, you don't, like, blank out like you just fucking smoked weed for the first time. Rob it was, was 100% coherent. That's his norm. The dude just didn't care. He literally had no idea what the feud was, what the angle was, really what he was doing. He went out there. Thank God Impact put the right guy over. Moose deserves it, man. Moose is Mr. Impact Wrestling. Uh, Moose carried that match. I'm just so happy that they fucking did the right thing. Props to Moose for getting a big win over, over, over probably the biggest thing he's wrestled in the man's career. Uh, so I, I'm going to say that just it was an, an absolute embarrassment for Rob Van Dam right before that match, if nothing else. Uh, let's go to Larkin. Uh, your, your thoughts on that? I know this was the dud for you as well. Yeah, this was my dud of the night. I mean, I was here's the thing. When I did predictions for this, I immediately thought RVD because you know he's it's his first match back with Impact. They're bringing RVD and he's going to beat Moose. This will continue. But I'll be honest with you, in my heart of hearts, I wanted Moose to win, and I was happy that he did win with the no jackhammer needed after Rob missed the five star frog splash. Uh, you know what it was too, man. It's just what RVD is ever since he's been coming in. It's just like. I'm kind of just like what, whatever with it, like like to to quote him, whatever. Just because it's like he's so like, yeah, I'm here. You know, he beats Ethan Page. You're doing the whole ECW stuff, like whatever it is with Robin Dan with me. You know, I mean, personally with RVD, I hope they bring in more of Katie Forbes, who we've seen on Wow as Chloe Hurts, and I'd love to see some more Katie Forbes. 
Yes, sir. And be a part of the Knockouts division. I know she's teaming with uh, Rebel uh, as uh, on the Indies as well. They just did that, uh, I believe, uh, reality championship wrestling on uh, Booker T Show on the Twitch show. They were tag team. And so, I mean, I'd like to see some Katie Forbes in there. But as far in regards, and I digress, back to RVD, the match wasn't my favorite. And I was very happy that the right guy went over in one moose. Moose. So, Hurls, please go right ahead. With the new theme song. Yes. <clears throat> yes. So uh, I'm I'm a huge RVD fan. Always have been. I think he is. He was way ahead of his time when he was doing all those crazy things in ECW and you know his early WWF run. Um, I agree. I thought his promo kind of rambled, and he just comes off as very arrogant. For somebody who probably shouldn't be that arrogant, but I don't know if he's like trying to incorporate that in his character. I'm not sure if if he's trying to. I mean, he's supposed to be the face in this match, and he's coming off more like a heel. So I guess that's kind of my issue with this whole thing. However, I have no problem with his wrestling ability anymore. I think um, you know he's 48. Yeah, he slowed down. But he still looks, you know, he still looks pretty good out there and still puts on a decent match. The match wasn't great, but it, I, I wouldn't call it a dud. I would definitely say it was just, you know, your average RVD match. If you look at RVD's last WWE run, they really never let him talk. He just kind of went out there and did his thing. I think that's kind of what RVD is now. He gets the crowd pumped up. He's a crowd pleaser for all his taunts and all his moves. And uh, he's still a name that, you know, a lot of people know. And a lot of people watched him during his prime. So I don't think it was a bad signing. I actually think it was a really good signing. And uh, if they were smart, I would put him in the tag team division. I think that would be a great way, especially with LAX leaving. Sabu looked pretty good his last uh, tapings at Impact. So why not put RVD and Sabu in the tag team division? They don't have to get the titles, but they can be certainly a team that uh, is, is, is a heavy – Heavy players in the tag team division. I'd be totally fine with that. So, um, match, just okay. Glad Moose won. He needed it. He needs to be world champ soon. Uh, he, I thought, I think he's been hitting hitting the, his new character out of the park. So, I would love to see Moose as world champ, um, like, now. Yeah, Moose is fantastic, man. He really is. I love the character. I love the new theme song. I love the way that he's, he's really evolved as a heel. Um, look, I'm not saying this match sucked either. It was definitely average. Um, it's just, you know, you say RVD, the cat crowd pleaser, man. He just didn't really get the crowd prompt. It's, you know, and I've been a fan of this. I was a huge fan of ECW, huge fan of his WWE run. I never watched him in a second. Never will. Never go back and watch that shit ever. You know, but his, and I didn't even necessarily hate him in his TNA run, but he packed it in and he didn't go full strength. And this time, I know he's older, but it just seemed like he was half-assing it so much more this time. And it was just... It put a bad taste in my mouth. RVD and Sabu to be in the tag team division wouldn't mind, but they need to be putting over the North and the Rascals, which they haven't put over the North so far. But, uh, yeah, that, that's what I got to say about that. So, um, moving on now, dude, fucking A. This is when, the, I mean, I'm, I'm watching this, I'm thinking this has been a good show, but I don't know how they top that X division match. Uh, so my mouth just dropped during this Monsters Ball. I'm going to go on a limb and say my Possibly the greatest Monsters Ball match I have ever seen. Possibly the greatest women's hardcore match. I've, actually, no, fuck that. This is by far the greatest hardcore women's wrestling match I've ever seen. Monsters Ball was fucking unreal. From the goddamn, uh, what was it, a, a fucking curb stomp into thumbtacks on our girl Rosemary taking that hit. Uh, goddamn fucking. The tombstone in the tacks. Rope, middle rope tombstone and a thumbtacks with females out here, man. Females doing this. Uh, Taya Valkyrie, who I've become such a huge fan of, and her her knockout championship reign has been so much better than I ever could have imagined it being retaining. Um, dude, I can't not even put this match over enough and how just stunned it and, and impressed and hyped up this got me. And somehow, like, the, dude, can you, can you believe that the two matches after this just killed it just as fucking much, too, is what's crazy to me. But Hurls, dude, Monsters Ball, my man. What you got on that? Uh, yeah, Monsters Ball was awesome. I mean, if anybody doesn't think Havoc bringing her back was a, was a bad signing, 
you're out of your mind. This this woman's hella talented. And you know what? I'm not excusing for anything that she said on Twitter, but we've all said some dumb shit that would get us in trouble. So, you know what? Everybody deserves a second chance. And if you don't believe in that, I don't even want to meet you in life. So, But anyways, this match was awesome. I mean, Sue Young, what can I say? Uh, that she is super talented, always been a fan. Rosemary, obviously, you know what? She takes some crazy bumps. Um, and she's, you know what? She's not back to 100% yet, but, you know, she's getting there. And Havoc looks amazing. Like, she's a bigger girl, but she can move. Like, she, she's such a good, a talented worker. And Taya, I love that she won. It was kind of predictable that she would win because she was, like, the only non-scary wrestler in there, basically, with Parker Kinnick. So um, I figured she'd win, but the match was awesome. Um, I can't wait to go back and watch it. It was – and I think you're right. I don't know. I really enjoyed Gail Kim and Angelina Love. They had a really good hardcore match. Um, Taryn Terrell and Gail Kim obviously had a great hardcore match. But this this may have topped it. Like, this is a match I think we're going to be talking about for years to come. Just an awesome knockout match. And I think everybody looked great. I don't think this match has any competition for any women's hardcore match ever. I would say women's best, best women's wrestling match I've seen it in, in five, ten years, if it weren't for the fact that Gail Kim versus Tessa happened in January, because those are, are neck and neck in two completely different types of matches to me. I don't think anything comes fucking close to this. And off the top of my head right now, I mean, there's been so many and I have to go back, but I can't think of a monstrous ball that, that compares to this one right now on, on its level, including the original. But Larkin, your, your thoughts, my man. Firstly, I thought, like, I remember watching Taylor Wilde and Daphne from 2009, that monstrous ball match, and I thought it exceeded that, you know. Uh, I really did enjoy it. I had no issue or qualms with any of it. I look at it like this. It progresses more to tie in Rosemary, which I think is going to be the Bound for Glory matchup, and I think that's where Rosemary finally brings the championship back to the hive. So I think that just progresses more with the Ty Rosemary storyline, since she pretty much said, hey, I'll help, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll look out for you and make sure you retain your championship, but in return I want a shot. So, I mean, Ty just hitting that chair, throwing it Sabu style at Jessica Havoc, taking the pin on Sue Young after that tombstone under the tax. I enjoyed it, and it progresses more towards uh, Ty and Rosemary, maybe some dis function at the junction, if you will, between Sue Young and Jessica Havoc. So, I mean, let's see what happens. Dude, and who saw that chair shot coming right after that? You know what I mean? It just flew out of fucking nowhere and <laughs> popped her, and then Taya gets on and, and, and gets the win, and you know, and, and I don't know if you guys have heard, but I heard the other day, I mean, Taya Valkyries came out with some comments, and Kyle, our very own Kyle, the, the monster chugging fucking uh drywall punching son of a gun that he is needs to watch out because it sounds like Ty is coming after Kyle himself uh, so him and his little monster tank can, can high hit, hightail it out of there but um, you know what man I want to say as much as I love Rosemary and, and she's the girl she's who I wanted to win and I hope that she ends up with the belt back soon. I still feel that the right person went over with Taya. The, this reign has been great. Um, and, you know, you're right, Harold. She's not back to 100%, but Rosemary's still fantastic out there. She's still a great wrestler, great performer. I know I, I've seen her kind of get a little upset and worked up for some people trolling her. Rosemary, fuck those trolls. You don't need to listen to them. You're above that, uh, and they mean nothing. They're just lifeless, sorry losers. So anyone that wants to hate on Rosemary and say the comments you said about her can go fuck off. So, uh, guys, somehow, these next few matches, so we had, we went from an absolute classic, followed up by an absolute classic, uh, Rich Swan and Johnny Impact, five stars. After we talk about this match, we're going to talk about Johnny Impact. Do I have a big echo, guys? No, you're fine, man. Okay, because I'm hearing one of my answer. Um, I'm going to go get a bottle of water after this, but I'm just going to say right now, man, this match totally fucking just killed it out here. Fantastic. Uh, I mean, just what the X Division is all about. I, I really thought Johnny Impact was going to go over. This Rich this Rich Swan X Division title reign has been fantastic. And one thing that I will say is, like, uh, a lot of his defenses haven't necessarily been against X Division people. Johnny Impact it, it embodies what the X Division does, too. This match was an X Division classic one for the ages. And, and Rich Swan, man, I mean, what a reign this guy's have when you go back and just look at it. And, and huge pay-per-view victories over fucking... Sammy Callahan and now Johnny Impact. I mean, two of the biggest stars 
and wrestling. And, and Rich Swan, man, is, say what you want about his career. Him and Sue Young are still together. So, you know, choke on that. Rich Swan has, has fucking just, man, what a, what a shining star in gym. This guy's for Impact Wrestling. Uh, Larkin, I'm going to let you take it. They, they go to Hurls. I'm going to run. I'll be, be right, right back to, to run this show, man. But fucking props to this classic. X Division style, baby. I really did enjoy it. I mean, I think if this was going to be Johnny Impact's uh, swan song, his sayonara, swan song, pun intended, if you will, I think they both went well. They both gelled together. The Spanish flies, just the dives, the aerial assaults. I mean, finishing with the 450. I thought they gelled very well, and I really did enjoy what we got between those two. And, well, I'm sure we're going to talk about Johnny Impact after, you know, his future and whatnot with Impact and what, where he goes afterwards. But I thought they had a hell of a match, man. I look forward to more Rich Swans, like we mentioned earlier, possibly Willie Mack, TJP. There's a lot of possibilities to see who challenges Rich Swan next, maybe even Ace Austin. So, Hurls, I'll t- let this go, man. I really did enjoy it. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I mean, all those names that you just mentioned, like, look at the X Division. It's pretty damn healthy right now. And, you know, we got the uh, Impact Wrestling hater, uh, Chef. He, he, he believes that the uh, X Division is ass right now. I, I totally disagree. I think it's one of the healthiest it's ever been. Um, you look at a match like this, very high up on the card. Obviously, Impact feels it still means a lot to the company. And this match just proved it. It was freaking fantastic. And we talked earlier about LAX. You know, they're most likely gone. Johnny Impact. Impact needs to st- needs to give him what he wants. This guy is worth it. He looks like a billion bucks every time he goes out to the ring. He's got Johnny Bravo doing his thing. I, I love it. I love it. Impact has to keep this guy. Larkin, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, where is Impact going for Bound for Glory? Uh, that would be Chicago, Pearls, Illinois. Okay. And the arena that they're going to, how many, how many people does that arena hold? About 5,000, a little over that, Pearls. Okay, so... So 5,000 people. Yes. Uh, that's one of the biggest arenas Impact's been in, I don't know, at least three, four years. Yes, and the I'm last guessing. Yes, and the last time that they ran Illinois for Bound for Glory was in 2008 when Samoa Joe and Sting main evented. Yes. So after 11 years, I come back to Illinois, which is a big deal as well. Go ahead, Earl. Oh, okay, so my point in this, you need to keep guys that have name value. Johnny Impact's one of those guys that has name value and – He's one of the best wrestlers in the world. I mean, Mike skills, not not so much. But wrestling ability, he's up there with anybody. And I'll put him against anybody. Impact needs to shell out the money. I, they can let LAX go. I'm totally fine with that. Johnny Impact, they got to shell out the money for this guy. He's 39. Lock him down for a four-year deal. Give him a four-year deal. Give him what this guy wants. They need to keep this guy. They need to sell tickets for Bound for Glory because I really do think they are trying a bigger arena for Bound for Glory. If it works, <clears throat> it, we, we may be getting more uh, pay-per-views in these bigger size arenas. So I, this is what I really want. Impact really needs to re-sign Johnny Impact. But this match was phenomenal. A guy on his way out gives you one of the best performances of the night, him and Rich Swan, Just, just... Loved it. Loved it. This match was so good. Last thing I will add to that, this venue that uh, Impact will be in for Bound for Glory in, in Illinois, this is also the venue that hosted ECW Anarchy Rules, I believe, in 1999. So there's another, there's historicness with uh, wrestling. So, go ahead. Very back. Sorry, just had to add that too. <laughs> no, man, I, I, well, I apologize for some, some great history there, man. Um, yeah, so it turns out, unfortunately... That uh, Johnny Impact's contract is done with Impact, and it actually had been done prior to this. He worked on handshake deal, and props to him not only for sticking with it, not leaving Impact in the dust, but coming out there and putting on a fucking classic with Rich Swan and really making sure that he put him over and, and worked his ass off for Impact Wrestling. Pearls, I 150% agree with what you said. Impact, it, Impact Wrestling really needs to keep johnny impact around uh they really really do and they need to give this guy a big offer and they need to they need to show some you know what i mean when, when you're trying to get a new tv deal and that's that's no we're just saying it no that that's a fact they're trying for this when you need to show impact wrestling is still a thing it, it's it's still on the up that you're still busting your ass and hungry out there and you want to show that you're ecw or something which i've been seeing for years i need to do you need to outbid one of these two for once. You need to show the fucking money 
to someone that is worth it, to someone who has busted their ass for you, someone who is just the, pers- the, the face of your company for so many months, come out here and do it. And they need to re-sign him. If they don't, long live Johnny Elite, I hope to God, because I don't want to see a John Morrison return, because I won't see a John Morrison return. But I think, yeah, three more years with this guy, two years, you've got to do something. Ty is still under contract, because Lord knows if you leave, if they're going to lose Johnny, they're going to lose Ty, and they can't lose either of them. And for them to lose Johnny Impact and LAX, I mean, who is left? You know what I mean? Like, they have got to do something here. So Impact, do what needs to be done. Any anything to to add here, gentlemen? Because I I don't know how we can make this point more clear than what Hurls and I just did. No, I think you said it perfectly there, Raven. I think Curls did too, but as my house, I got to chime in with my bullshit. <laughs> um, and then we had a heavyweight championship match, which should have been the main event because poor Cage, two pay per views in a row, has not been the headliner. But uh, dude, did this match defy expectations too? And I want to say something for anyone that that is shit on Michael Elgin. It has been down on him because for some reason I see all these people since since I've been following Elgin's career for about five, six years now. Not that long, but long enough. I've seen so many people knock this guy. For one, if you want to take away the, the step where he was trying to be set up by a female during this hashtag Me Too moment and, and say the stuff that was said about him for him to be proven innocent 100%, that is innocent. This guy has came in and has fantastic match after fantastic. Him and Rich Swan was a fucking classic too. He's got great matches with Willie Mack. Um, his promo skills aren't the greatest, but he's come out and he's entertained. I cannot put big Mike Elgin over enough. I was not that big on it when he came out. I was just like, okay, well, the Elgin hype train died down with, with our age years ago. Dude, Mike Elgin is a beast. He has been fantastic. He has been such a fucking bright star for Impact Wrestling. And anyone that doesn't see this man as a main eventer or as a world champion can kiss my ass. Him and Cage put out, for two dudes, they've, I mean, look, what Brian Cage can do for a man his size with his build and all that is insane to start with, but this match was fucking fantastic, too. Heavyweight title match that really delivered as a heavyweight title match. Uh, Cage retaining, I think, was the right thing. I don't know where Bound for Glory goes. I, I, I worry who the challenger could be because I feel it might be the loser of the main event winning the belt, um, but I'm not opposed to this uh, a rematch. I'm not opposed to Mike Elgin actually becoming the champ at some point after his performance tonight. Uh, I hope to God it's not a three-way match with the little fat, stumpy-legged uh, 70-year-old man that came in and, and hit a spear at the end. Uh, but, dude, this match was a classic. Curls his boy coming back at the end. I hope to God they don't get in trouble from the WWE for, for this fucking guy of all people. Uh, but Rhino coming in at the end. I just I want to give this match the props that it deserves, and I don't think I can do it right. So, Larkin, I'm going to go to you, and then I'm going to let Curls suck it off. Who was this man? He hit a spear. Uh, what is going on here? It's Rhino. Uh, okay, so <laughs> I thought the match was very good. Uh, I thought they both worked hard. You got two guys who are big dudes, and they can move for their size, and they worked very, very hard. They did the esque uh, British Bulldog Bret Hart SummerSlam finish with, you know, Brian Cage just all into the legs, one, two, three. And as Don Kale said, he won with a wrestling move, a wrestling move, and he put Michael Elgin away, and then he goes to attack. Don Callis, and then he hits a quote-unquote spear when the crowd is chanting, gore, 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 you know who the F it is. So, I mean, we're probably going to see maybe some Brian Cage, Michael Elgin, and Rhino triple threat, Michael Elgin, and Rhino at Bound for Glory. Who knows, but all I got to say is I thought the match delivered. Was I a fan of what happened afterwards? Eh, whatever. I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, Rhino was a former NWA champion back in 2005. So, I mean, it's going to be very interesting to see where it goes forward. But, Hurls, go ahead. Rhino, 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 gore, gore, gore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so this match was really good. Like it, like when you go into a match and you think, ah, it's not going to be that good. You have low expectations. And when those expectations get beaten because it was much better than you thought it was going to be, you end up liking the match a whole lot more. And that's kind of like what I thought of this match. I thought two hosses going at it. Just doing move after move after move. I thought it was great. I thought the promo before was super solid by Michael Elgin. I was kind of nervous about his mic skills because I saw him in Ring of Honor with the low production. And I don't know. I never really thought his his mic skills were, were all that impressive. I thought he really knocked it out of the park, park with that promo he did uh, before the match. And the match just delivered to me. I mean, yeah, it was kind of a spot fest, but... 
to see two heavyweights like that just go blow for blow and just spot after spot and the stuff they were able to hit, I thought it was a great match. I really did. It was it was it was a lot of fun. And then and an, another testament to how um, good this match was. Once again, I was watching it with two guys who normally don't watch Impact Wrestling, and they did not know who who these guys were, and they came away very impressed. So um, I just want to say it was it was very fun to watch. And, and Rhino coming back, I, I, I pretty much figure once Rhino said he wasn't going to re-sign with WWE, I figured he would come to Impact Wrestling because he is such good friends with Scott Demore, and, uh, you know, Scott Demore used him a lot in Border City Championship Wrestling. I think he's a solid vet. Um you know, Rhino's a little younger than RVD. I think he'll give it a little bit better of an effort. Uh, I think Rhino's a good hand to have. And um, I also got to ask you, too, uh, Larkin. I don't know if you watched Raw or not, but t- tonight was a Raw, like, was like a special Raw, correct? Uh, well, next week is the re- Raw reunion, Hells. Okay, and, and did I read that Raw is trying to get RVD and Rhino to show up on that? Uh, uh, they're trying to get permission? I'm, I'm thinking so. I haven't heard about that. I, I, I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, they're going to have Santino and, like, Austin and Hogan and all, everybody that's pretty much been on Raw. Like, Ted DiBiase is going to be on Sergeant Slaughter. But I wouldn't be shocked if they're going to try to get RVD and Rhino on there because they were integral parts of Raw. Uh, okay, well, what what if you're Impact Wrestling and... and and I've heard WWE's not taking any action with Rhino's appearance, even though they had a mask and they didn't allude to any of his, you know, what the names actually called of his moves. I mean, what better way to just loan Rhino for a night and then just call it a fair trade, right? So um, that may happen. So, but but you know, going back to Rhino coming in, I I'm fine with him. I think I think he'll get booked right and. I'd like to see some of that old ECW Rhino come back, or even early TNA Rhino come back, the way he's booked then, not the Rhino versus Rockstar Spud versus EC3 type Rhino. So that's all I got to say. All right. Yeah, man. I think that pretty much sums up that match. And as far as Rhino goes, well, here's the thing. When he was doing what in his last run in the WWE, most of it was just comedy shtick with Heath Slater. And it was funny, but then it kind of was just like he's there for filler just to put people over and do what Rhino does. It's kind of like how he has when he was in ECW, and uh, ECW, I'm sorry, NXT in uh, 2015 being the veteran that he is, and that's what he you know went with. But, yeah, I mean, now that he's um going into Impact, whatever. So let's uh, let's see what happens, man. Let's just see what happens. But I'm thinking we're going to put him in into the top realm, if you will. So now we could say Don Callis and Rhino. We're going back to ECW 2000. It's Cyrus the Virus. It's Rhino, the last ever ECW champion. So we get all the ECW guys now. Go ahead, Raven. Yeah, no doubt, man. I mean, what more can be said? Um, I, I, I know, Hurls, you talked about how you wanted to see the... Uh, Don Callis and Rhino repairing like they did with the, with the ECW with the re, you know where they uh with, with that was the network and they were coming out as the heels and Paul Heyman was the the face and that led to ECW with the actual turmoil going on between the TNN executives and, and Paul Heyman and ECW I actually would be pretty much all for that that would be pretty fucking cool but uh, we're gonna hop into the main event here uh, unfortunately we've had some circumstances come up where we need to kind of. Finish up with Impact. We're going to redo. We're going to do AEW at a later time uh, if, if the Impact team doesn't do it. But let's talk about this main event, historic main event. Um, historic and also in the way that if, if Tessa Blanchard were to go over, the Impact AEW dude and, and the RVE were actually going to stop watching Impact Wrestling. Now, I can't express enough how much I cannot stand this this social justice warrior shit, this, this fucking girls wrestling men. These women beating up the men, that this this falsehood bullshit and, and so fucking fake that's going on. And I'm closing my door for a reason because I want to I wanna express this shit because everyone is so worried to offend someone and oh it's girl power and girls can beat up guys. If you don't think girls can beat no, I don't, motherfuckers. No, look, I'm gonna tell you my wife, who is a victim of domestic violence, not from me by any means, but her ex. Now my wife was watching Impact Wrestling with me when when we first started. And she doesn't. Now I asked my wife not too long ago, why why did you stop watching Impact? And she said, it's, it's the guy versus girl shit. I can't do it anymore. It's fake. It's so fake, it's so hard to believe. And then she said, you know, as, as someone who's been through this, a guy that's so small is still going to overpower a bigger woman. A guy is going to beat up a woman because biologically, genetically, that's just how it is. 
And it's so hard for me to believe that a girl would do this. And when I see this stuff on TV and I see a man hitting a woman, all I can think about is what I went through. Everyone is so afraid with their, their social justice warrior to prove this, to prove that, and don't want to offend anyone, or don't want to offend anyone. The real people, and I felt this way even before him, that they're, that they're fucking insulting, that they're offending, are the people with a fucking brain who have either been through this, have family members who have been through this, or, or, or together with someone who's went through this, and it's fucking stupid, and I hope to God that this is the end of the intergender shit. I know that it's not, but it should be. Now, what happened in this match, it was a good match, it was historic, it was an intergender main event, but the right person fucking won, and they did what I felt they should have done. And, Hurls, I know you said this, too, when, when they did the um, United We Stand show with Joey Ryan, who is a massive douchebag, I might add. Um, it was like, we watched that match, and I just felt if, Tess, if Joey Ryan would have at least beat Tessa, the way that she put up a fight would make her look a lot better. And that's what they did in this match, and I don't have a problem with it. You know, I turn this match on, my wife comes out, and it's, it's where Sammy's got her, her legs around it, and he's throwing her around outside, and my wife just goes, I can't, I can't look at this. It was the right person went over, thank God. The, the Sammy gave her the bats at, at the end to show the respect. It was what it was. was. Callahan went over. I feel it bound for good. Even though they've done this, I mean, at the next way, who can challenge, especially if Johnny's gone, after Cage moves on, from Elgin, where does it go? Let's go back to Sammy. Callahan is the man that should be the Impact Wrestling World Champion. He's the best thing going in this fucking company, not Tessa. My fear is is Tessa versus Cage at Bound for Glory, where, where Tessa wins the belt. That's what I'm fearing. But I would give this match credit. I don't feel it was the main event. I, I feel it should have been middle of the card. I, I understand why they do it. I'll think, even though I think that it's lame, but props to Tessa, props to Callahan for going out there, making her look good. And, and props to Impact Wrestling for doing the fucking right thing for who you put over and making it believable. Anyone that's saying they should have pulled the trigger on, on Tessa, you're a fucking idiot. Hurls? Um, you know, I... That Joey Ryan, Sammy Gall... Or, I'm sorry, Joey Ryan, Tessa Blanchard match actually... Really, um, you know, my expectations were low, but it was actually a pretty good match. This match was really, really fun. It was exciting, but it was also uncomfortable at times because the, the pain I saw in Tessa, like, she gave it her all. And maybe that was just part of her, you know, kind of selling it. But this match, to me, was really good. Um, I'm glad Sammy Callahan won. I think, you know, it... it, it I don't want to say it, it would have hurt him because Sammy Callahan is a guy that doesn't need to win matches. But surprisingly, I think a lot of people expected Tessa to win. So I I, I really, really enjoyed this match. And I, I mean, main event, the right guy won. But I don't know if we're done with Tessa Blanchard facing other male competitors because um, she's already got a match booked against Madman Fulton at the uh, upcoming tapings, which, oh, man, I hope she does not win that unless there's interference. Um, but, you know, I'm a huge Madman Fulton fan, so uh, Tessa's a great though. She's a star. I mean, there's no other way around it. She is a legitimate star. She had the whole crowd going crazy for her. Tessa's going to kill you. I mean, she is so over. It's It's unbelievable how over she is. Sammy Callahan so over. He's just a great heel. It was a really good main event. Um, the, the the people I was watching with were just glued. They were they were pretty mesmerized to the point where um, they are actually pretty excited for Bomb for Glory. So I think it did it did its job on that front. Um, as far as your 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 issues with uh, Raven, I totally understand. I you know if I was a victim, I'm not a girl, obviously, but. You know, if I was married to a, a woman that had domestic violence issues, I I could see that being very uncomfortable as well. And um, that, that's that, that's half the reason I'm not I'm not really into intergender wrestling. I mean, it it can work, but I just I guess I don't I don't know I don't want to see it every week, and, and it's just not realistic enough for me. Uh, the the match was really good. I can't say anything more about it. It just capped off a really solid, or I'm, I'm going to say great pay-per-view, 
I'm going to go great, not solid. It was a great pay per view. I'm going to say it was a probably a anywhere from a 8.5 to a nine out of ten. Okay, uh, I understand Raven your sentiments 100 percent as well. I agree with what Hurls just said. Um, I did enjoy Sammy and Tessa. I think in this instance with Intergender Wrestling, it worked. Uh, we're going to see more of this in this Fallout thing where they're tag team partners. Let's see if they can get along, that being Sammy and Tessa Blanchard. I did like the thumbs up, thumbs down in the pile driver in the finishing sequence, and then we saw them, you know, touch bats and, you know, Tessa's reaction after Bound for Glory went off the air. I thought it worked well, and yes, I will say this. Uh, I did like the fact that Sammy won. I would have been fine if Tessa won, but I think in this instance with Sammy, I personally see him. I know you've been wanting him to be world champion for a while now, Raven, and I think he got more back in the W column. I think he did well. I mean, look at last year's match with uh, Pentagon Jr. And this year with Tessa, I mean, Sammy's been killing it at Slammiversary, and I hope he wins that world title in the near future. But we shall see, because he's the draw. Everything. So, yeah, I did enjoy the uh, main event. As far as my rating out of 10, I also would give it an 8, 8.5 out of 10. Very good show. Go ahead, Raven. I gave this motherfucker a 9. I think it was a 9 out of 10. There was one, one match that uh, was not good to great it was just average uh everything else was very good tag team match like i said could have been better if it weren't for that injury look um there's there's the rumors going on and i figured it would be announced at slam anniversary if there was something so it makes me feel like there's not but there is the the rumors of of impact going to the axs or access network but if we want to call it owned by mark cuban the new japan show is on there um that was the rumor going on i i feel like it would have been announced by now um look man it i've seen people be like oh it's in X amount of millions of household. It's a huge network. It's a fucking, not even B or C, it's a D-grade sports network to get shitty, low-brow, low-in, nobody fucking watches sports programming. Is it better than Pursuit? Yes. Will I take it? Is it better than Pop TV? No, it's 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 really not. Um, I don't expect high ratings. I hope that they get it off of a Friday night time slot, especially when they do. If they do move it or go to this AXS or Access Network, um, I, I really, I'm, just, I'm reserving my thoughts on it. I hope they do because it's one of them off pursuit. I really am pushing and hoping for Viceland, not that Viceland is anything special, but the programming on there sticks out to me a lot more than, than something super low rate and low budget like AXS. Like I said, I'd rather see uh, Dark Side of the Ring and It's Always Sunny come across my guy than, than anything that I see on AXS. Um, Larkin, I'm, I'm going to kick it to you and, and we'll go to Hurls and then I'm just going to briefly run down what I saw at Fight for the Fallen. Okay. So, with Access TV, uh, it's on Sling. I get it. Uh, New Japan's on there. WoW Women of Wrestling will be coming back there for Season 2 very soon, which will feature a lot of Impact talent, such as Tessa Blanchard, who's the champ, uh, Jessica Havoc, Adrenaline, the former Diamante, uh, Sassy Massey, who is Alicia Edwards, will be on WoW Women of Wrestling. So there's a lot, and Kiara Hogan, who is Fire. So we're going to see a lot of Impact talents on WoW Women of Wrestling. Uh, I'm looking forward. If it does happen, I'm looking forward to it because it got it'll have three shows that I watch that'll be on Access TV. I mean, Access TV they also have concerts on there as well and a lot of music programs, which is cool. So I mean, I dig it. I, I if anything's better than Pursuit. Uh, but if as far as anything, if I hope it happens. If not, I like the Viceland idea. I've been saying WG in America, but let's see what happens as far as the TV deal go. And uh, Hurls, I know you'll add more to that because I believe you get Access TV, right, Hurls? I do. I do. Okay, get yeah, Hurls. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm any, you know, like you said, anything's a step up from Pursuit, uh, Access TV, they're, they're growing, I mean, they just expanded not too long ago, I believe they, they expanded to a lot more homes than they were originally on, which I believe it was 30, 39 million, so yes. I would say they're probably at least in like anywhere from 50 million to 60 million now. So um, hopefully we can start seeing, you know, some of those shows uh, back on the cable 150 and we'll finally get to know what uh, Impact's ratings are going to be. So I'm totally fine. Any channel they get is a plus, in my opinion, because you can't really go anywhere but up from Pursuit. Uh, Do I wish it was a bigger network? Sure. But I also am going to be realistic. Access, I think, is a solid option. And I'm hoping that uh, it, it works and they, they get a nice deal and can start moving forward and hopefully make it, make some money off of their TV deal. Well, Hurls, you're being realistic, and, and that's good because if you listen to the Colby or Cody bullshit factor, I'm sure they're going to tell you they're going to be on like USA or, or um, ESPN or, or some major network anytime soon, Paramount Spike, because 
of course, Impact's going to be pulling two million ratings as soon as they get somewhere other than Pursuit and Twitch. Uh, and then the five million people that tune in after Twitch is over with on Impact throughout the week because Impact is the biggest thing out there. Um, just be realistic, Impact fans. Seriously, enough is enough. Stop hating AEW. Stop fucking reaching on for, for some of these people. Jesus Christ, Andre Corbill was hoping for CBS. Corbill, you out of your goddamn mind? Um, look... <laughs> That's what we have. So, look, I said we're going to run down uh, Fight for the Fall on the AEW event, but, look, we're, we're running out of time. Hurls hates AEW because they're not Impact, and he's salty. Uh, Larkin's, Larkin's running out of time. So let me just run down the show, and honestly, man, I wish I could have run down Fighter Fest because I loved Double or Nothing. I run, I loved Fighter Fest. This show, honestly, is only worth a few minutes because I, I'm not going to lie. As much as I love AEW, this was nowhere near the show that the other two were. Um, anyone comparing these two glorified house shows to Double or Nothing, you're a fucking idiot, so that cut that nonsense please um the sunny kiss stuff to start against the librarian like people are booing the librarian i'm booing sunny kiss nothing against his lifestyle whatever but i would hate to be a male that puts this guy over because i'm not i would not want to lose that uh, i drove home during the tag team match apparently uh adam cole's wife dr Britt baker the dentist had a, a concussion yes wait oh, whoa, 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 whoa. raven sorry don't, don't mean to cut you off uh -huh. yes there was an instance where she tagged the wrong partner she, t she didn't tag her partner. She was tagging yeah. the opposition's partner because she got nailed hard, man. And she tried to continue, but the rumor was that Audrey uh, Aubrey Edwards, who was the referee, actually took Britt Baker to the hospital. Oh wow! So my buddy, my good buddy, old school heel, what's up, OSH? Uh, it told me about that, uh, about the Britt Baker thing, because I completely missed it. Uh, the the start of the show kicked in. I mean, look, man, it, you're, you're always blessed with the salt of the earth, MJF, the the fucking next big thing in wrestling, who. If Fighter Fest cut the promo of a lifetime, bashing on 90% of video gamers and 95% of the IWC, put the two together in, in the IWC gaming community, that's 100% of the, the fan base that he made fun of there. Uh, greatest promo I've ever seen. I love MJF. Nice to see his team get over. Him and, and Sean Spears getting the win, the rivalry there, even though they're both heels going on. Um, one thing I do I do want to say, two criticisms about AEW real quick while I get there, is it is hard as fuck to determine right now like who is playing the face and who is playing the heel in a lot of roles uh in a way i like it in a way it, it's it's a little bit on the what the fuck you doing i mean obviously i know jericho's a heel mjf is a heel uh and 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 so on and so forth i know dustin rhodes is, is a is a face but i mean brandy is a heel i don't necessarily know what they're doing with the lucha brothers the young bucks cody i mean they, they all vary back and forth but um awesome telling that opener man i i love darby allen he stole the show against cody that back pump that he took on there uh, I, I also want to give props to the Cody Rhodes share shot that people are shitting on. It was amazing. I love it. Want to see more of it. I know it was a gimmick failure, but man, bring bring the '90s and the, and the tough guy shit back. Um, second match, man. Uh, I was I think God Awesome Kong came out to to make this look a little bit better than than it needed to be because I was really thinking, good God, Brandy Rhodes is actually going to go over Ali Queen. Um, sadly, even with Awesome Kong out there, Brandy Rhodes basically went over Alley Clean, it, and that's that's one complaint that I will have about AEW because Brandy Rhodes has no business not only pinning Alley but being at the highlight of a, of a division. Um, Austin Kong was going to put Alley away, and then some short little stumpy Asian who also has the last name of Kong came out to make it some big stare down. I'm just going to be honest. Awesome Kong would wait a minute. Awesome Kong would murder this Oompa Loompa in real life. I don't even want to see it. Wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did not mean to interrupt. My apologies. No, man, I, I want to hear. I want at least you to chime in, Larkin. I'm okay. trying to rush to it for you, buddy. But yeah, It's okay. I just go to chime in on this one. Then you can go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Asha Kong, the legendary Asha Kong versus Awesome Kong. Looks like it's coming at all out, man. The legendary Asha Kong in Japan, and she's been all over the world because uh, this is where Awesome Kong really got her monster character from, the Awesome Kong and Asha Kong. So it's going to be a big like dream match for a lot of the fans because that's what Awesome Kong's gimmick is based off of, Asha Kong's uh, destruction, just because they're both monsters. All right, go ahead. I'm, I apologize. Go ahead. But, Lark, it, I'm 6 and one I look like Godzilla to Asha I know, Kong. I know, sure. awesome I know. Awesome Kong is a legit monster. I know, I agree. But, yeah, that's I, I, for, for, for me and as a fan and knowing the history, I, I appreciated what they're trying to do. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Raven. Dun, 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 dun. It, my boy Freddie Fargo, the legendary Freddie Fargo, was was a big fan on this as well. So I do want to say that. Um, the Super Smash Brothers, a.k.a. the Dark Order, the first time I got to see these guys, they won the uh, triple threat match to go on to face uh, Trent and, and Chucky e. T at, at All Out, which I figured it was a pretty predictable thing, but it's a good way of setting up the feud as, as to where it's going. Um, I, I still, I'm a big fan of Luchasaurus, man, and I'm a big fan of Jack Evans, so not seeing either of those guys go over was good, but it, it's doing what it's supposed to do. I'm super excited, almost more than anything, about this AEW Tag Team Tournament. I think it's going to be fire. 
Uh, we had the uh, blandest vanilla challenging for the world title man in the history of, of being a vanilla midget, Adam Hangman Page, defeating Kit Sabian, getting attacked by Y2J afterwards. Uh, AEW, I know you got brains, putting Hangman Page over Jericho, making this guy your first champ. Or anyone that's not Chris Jericho as your first champ is a huge mistake. I'm not a Hangman Page fan. I'm not buying into it. I did enjoy the match. It was pretty decent. Nothing nothing special, uh, but, but there it was there. Um, match of the night, which was what I expected to be the match of the night for me, was the Lucha Brothers defeating uh, Kazarian and Scorpio Sky. I wish it would have been the bad influence. I hate seeing uh, my man Frankie Kazarian or, or Daniels ever take a pin, but uh, it was good to see the Lucha Brothers get their first AEW win, um, and, and I love that. They took the, the, the ladder afterwards, and they made a challenge to the Young Bucks for what looks like it could be a full metal mayhem. I'm excited, especially if you see the Lucha Brothers and, and the LAX match, and then you see the Lucha Brothers against uh, Young Bucks at it, it, it fucking double or nothing and how much of a classic that was. I am so excited for what this is going to bring, and I believe it'll probably be all out for that match. And I'm thinking like this right now. I mean, we've seen the Lucha Brothers and, and LAX have some classics, and I can see that match so many times. What I'm hoping for, man... Because with the partnership with AAA and Conan being able to lead, and, and I don't see anything. If LAX is gone, I don't see anything from Conan on Impact. Sadly, I would love to see a a, a stable, a, a faction with the LAX and the Lucha Brothers and, and Conan all there, like a bonded rivalry. Uh, Jericho still here, heel of the year. I love what he did coming out there, attacking Page, flipping off the crowd, taking the live mic, going down. Y two J. But match of the night was definitely, definitely. The Lucha Brothers beating uh, SCU. Kenny Omega defeating SEMA. Uh, fuck SEMA. I hate him because he got the win over Daniels uh, the, at, at Fighter Fest. Um, solid and entertaining. I mean, I'm, I'm not a, a Kenny Omega bandwagoner like so many other people are. I know, understand a lot of people love him. I've got to take more time to get used to the guy. He's just, the hype annoys me with the Bullet Club and the Kenny Omega and all that shit to where I, I'm just not into him as much. So, um, that, uh, I... I'm just not on the Kenny Omega bandwagon, man, so it, it's got to take more than that. But obviously, he was going to get the win. I'm excited for him and Moxley when that happens at All Out. Um, and then we had uh, Jericho came out with the, the live mic on there, uh, which was good. Rip in, rip in Jacksonville. My wife was originally born in Jacksonville, so I was actually making fun of her earlier for that today. Uh, my boy Old School Heels from Jacksonville area at 1.2. Um, second match of the night was, was the one I expected to be was the Young Bucks against Cody and Dustin Rhodes. Fantastic, fantastic match. Um, Young Bucks going over, of course. Uh, one, one complaint I have is, is Young Bucks are being look, used, booked so hard to look like these goddamn like strong, buff, unbeatable guys. To me, they're not the best tag team in the world. To, to me, that's LAX or the Lucha Brothers, but the Bucks are right there. Uh, fantastic match. Right team going over. Cody Rhodes is, is now, has still not gotten a win in, in AEW, and I actually like that. Um, I, I like the, the interview that they did afterwards, playing in AEW, getting the crowd hyped up. You had the VPs out there. Dustin was still out there. Um, and, and asking, they take this shot at the WWE with uh, them putting the Evolve Matt event to counter what they're doing, and you can't counterproduce that. Getting the crowd behind him. The crowd was big for what it was. Crowd is hyping into it. The one other complaint I, I know I forgot to mention earlier with AEW is there's way too many goddamn fucking near falls and pinfalls, and it's making it look less, less believable. I mean, some of these matches, like, how are these guys kicking out? Come on, give me a break. I'm not shitting on this show. I thought it was a very good show. I'm going to give it, like, a, a B or a C, like a 6 or 7 out of 10. Uh, Fighter Fest, I'd give it an 8. Double or nothing, I'd give it an 8.5 or 9. Great shows. I love AEW. I'm so on this bag wagon. I cannot wait for October. I'm glad the Hillcast is, is branching out and doing AEW and Impact. We're going to convert hurls one way or another, even if we have to do that whole thing where like the people would take the gay kids to, to church and <laughs> show them a bunch of bare-ass porn and try and turn them straight. That's what we're going to do with hurls. Look, uh, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up there. I want to thank Larkin for sticking around. I know he's going to get up early. Raven, 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 sitting Raven, by and listening Raven, to a real company. Raven, hold on, hold on. <laughs> One thing I just want to add to that, because I did see the show. It was a great show. But they did actually announce we do have the first five matches confirmed for All Out. That being Adam Page versus Chris Jericho for the inaugural AEW World Championship. John Moxley versus Kenny Omega. The best friends, Chucky e. T and Trent Beretta versus The Dark Order, who we saw won it at uh, Fight for the Fallen. And a tag team match where the runner receives a first round buy in the AEW World Tag Team Championship Tournament that will also take place when AEW goes to TNT. Cody Rhodes versus Sean Spears. 
and the challenge looks to be it has been accepted. We have a ladder match for the AAA World Tag Team Championship as the Lucha Brothers go head to head with the Young Bucks. So that is the five matches announced. And I bet you we get Awesome Kong, it's Aja Kong. Yep. It, all that is a, is a fucking awesome card, man. You yep. cannot tell me this card is not sick right now. Those matches are all kind of predictable, and I didn't know about this, but that that's this this card is hot. You cannot tell me it's not. Yeah, so that's that's the five matches that have been announced for All Out so far. All Out, baby, August 31st. Yep. All right. Look, uh, we're going to sign out. I got Hurls. I trolled Hurls good and got him rolling there, and he's butthurt about the real company. But it is a real company on T and T for AEW, SCU, the heel cast, Larky like with the SMS, Hurls with the Fantastic Hurls cast, my impact. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying right now. Guys, is there anything to chime in so we can let Larkin get to bed? Thank you all very much for listening, and I appreciate each and every one of you listening to the Heel Cast. And just any, just all I can say is just support pro wrestling and support support any podcast that loves professional wrestling like we do. So thank you all very much, and thank you. Uh-huh.